2023, how fast everything goes. The new year is ahead of us, and with it, there's going to be some change. I haven't made a video in a long time, and I think at this point, this channel is probably just sort of like a vlogging or a lifestyle channel, and perhaps I've already said that before, but I'm going to say it again. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about goal setting for the new year, mainly for myself, but hopefully through this video I can impart some wisdom on people watching it and encourage some of you that are maybe out there looking for a resolution or looking to change your life in some way. I know it's very hard and I'm not normally a fan of these sort of resolutions because it's very easy to say you want to do something and it's very hard to actually follow up on that and I've definitely fallen victim to that own mindset. So. With this video, I hope to keep myself a little bit accountable and, and hopefully for everyone out there, you all can do the same. Now, apologies for this. You probably see some light flickering in the background. That's actually, I'm using my desktop as a little bit of light and now I look extremely blue, so let's not do that. Let's just keep it like this. Or maybe, you know what, let's, let's try something else here. Can we use, I wonder if I can use the flashlight from my iPhone. Can I use like a mild version of it, just like pointed at my face? Is that like too crazy? Maybe if I lift up my glasses, you won't see so much of a glare. But then again, if I do that, I fear that it might just look strange. Okay, so the point of the video is this. I have three overarching goals that I wanna do for this whole year, and they're pretty much physical goals, financial goals, and career goals. I wanna talk a little bit about each one of those and hopefully you all can learn a thing or two. And I'd also love to hear anyone's perspective in the comments down below. And of course, to start a conversation with the broader community. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm gonna pull out my phone here because I have taken notes on my phone. And I think that's something that I also wanna start doing. Just trying to keep myself a little more accountable throughout the day. So the first thing, the first heading here is financial. So here are a couple of bullet points that I've taken that I think are going to help me a lot. And I guess the reason that financial is a is a goal of mine because I want to, I'm probably going to be starting a family within the next couple of years, like an actual family with kids. And I, I want to invest in a bigger home for my family. And so in order for me to get there, I either have to make more money or save more money, probably do both. I want to do both. And for me to save money, I have to be a little more aware of the spending that I'm doing and also you know, I can make more money by investing, but let's get a little bit into that. Okay, so the first thing I have here is think before making a purchase. And I think that also goes, that goes actually a lot into pretty much everything. All the bullet points can really fit into one, but I think this is mostly to just be aware of the purchases that you're making and try to give yourself an entire day before actually biting the bullet and making that purchase. And let me give you a couple of examples of this. So recently, there have been some things in my house that I want to get. Maybe, for example, I want to get some like organizational tools or maybe I want to get something for my garage. For example, we recently went through a lot of winter cleaning and we wanted to get some more storage bins for our garage. Now, I can very easily go to Walmart or one of these big box stores, apologies for that noise, oh, you know, a big box store and buy one of these storage containers, which will probably cost me three to four times whatever I can get used or even maybe for free. And that's exactly what I mean. Me literally two weeks ago would have just said, no, I want the new one. I want to go to Walmart or Home Depot or anywhere that sells storage containers and buy the new thing because I just felt like that's the person I was. And only recently that I start going on things like OfferUp, for example, and finding the same items that I need in great condition and just offering something that's good for me. So for example, I bought like a very large storage bin that worked perfectly for me and was even bigger than what I needed. So I have more room for the future and it cost me $10, which for me is amazing. And it was in perfect condition. I mean, the lady that was selling it barely even used it. So you could get lucky and find what you're looking for either for free or very cheaply and in very good condition. So I think that's sort of the first thing. Be a little bit aware of the purchases that you're making and look for cheaper alternatives. Here's another thing. I don't like reading, okay? but I like the idea of owning a lot of books. I used to like the idea of owning a lot of physical books and I was attracted to cover art. Literally the way that a book looked attracted me to buy it and then I would never read it. I used to have stacks of books that I never read. And what I did recently was I found two books that I really wanted because I wanted to study some stuff related to computer science. 
and I got both of them for free online through digital PDFs, which is amazing. And I used to think that I needed the physical book because it was going to, it's a weird mind game that I play with myself of like, if I own the physical book, I'm going to end up studying more or doing better or being able to take notes. And I never did any of that. It's one of those things that you tell yourself you're going to do all these things, but you you keep doing things and stalling from actually doing the thing. And by the thing, I mean reading the book. The most important thing is reading the book and trying to soak in the knowledge, not worrying about do I have it physical or digital or can I take notes or can I not take notes. So I just went online, found both books digitally for free and I haven't spent a cent on any of those books. So already I saved, I think in total, even if I was going to buy both of them used, it was going to cost me like 45, 50 bucks. So I literally saved 50 bucks and 50 bucks here and there really goes a long way. So I know you've heard that saying a long time, like, oh, a little bit here and there goes a long way, but it's so true. If you look at bank statements and you see the amount you spend on these little, little things, they quickly add up before your very eyes. And before you know it, you're spending way more than you ever wanted to and you're just like stuck. So that's one thing that I would highly encourage for everyone to do. Look for all cheaper, look for cheaper alternatives. Find find like physical things that you need for the house or books or furniture, anything you need. Try to go on a place like OfferUp or probably even Craigslist. A lot of times you can find free items on Craigslist and it will save you a ton of money. Obviously, you know, keep in mind the quality of the thing that you're getting. If it's something you know you're going to invest in, you're going to keep for a very long time, then by all means, get something that's new. But if it's something that you just need temporarily or you just want to be able to help you get to another, you know, the next level in your life, consider getting a free or used. Another really good example of this, I'm looking at my notes here, is I recently went to Wisconsin with my girlfriend because she had a work trip. And prior to going to Wisconsin, we went to Colorado earlier last year. And when I went to Colorado, I really wanted to drive a Jeep because one, I love Jeep Wranglers. And two, I figured it was going to be snowy and there's a lot of mountains. So I need something that has four wheel drive. Now in Colorado, having the Jeep did help me, but in Wisconsin, I went and used an app called Hopper. So Hopper is a mobile app that you can download that sort of tracks future prices for you and tells you the best time to make a purchase on a rental car, a hotel room. And I'll leave links to all these apps or books that I'm mentioning in the description down below so you all can use it. But this this Hopper app essentially gave me a very good price on an economy car. And I said, you know what? I'm going to get the cheapest car I can for three days because all I need to be able to do is go from point A to B. That's all I need to do. And the cheapest option they had was called mystery car. I mean, you don't even know the car you're getting. Now that could sometimes work in your favor because you might end up getting slightly more of an upgrade, but I ended up getting this, it was a Mitsubishi something, very cheap car. I mean, it was manual windows, but you know what? It was perfect. It warmed us up because it was like eight degrees. It got us from point A to B. We even drove some friends around and we ended up having so much fun in this little car that we thought, oh, you know, we need the Jeep or we need the fancier car. We need the extra functionality. In reality, you don't. It's just one of these things that when you actually save the money and maybe go back down a couple levels, you realize you're just as happy as if you would have spent the extra money. So all this being aware of the money you're spending, you'll oftentimes get you to the same happiness. And then you can use that extra save money to really get into your goals. Let me tap the screen here just to see how long we've been recording. I thought I would be able to, I think I have to tap the back of this. Sorry if there's so much movement. Okay, 851. So that that's one really cool thing. And like I said, the reason for all this saving is because I I want to eventually put a down payment on another house. I want to be able to rent this house out as you know some sort of passive slash rental income and be able to supplement that for the next house I buy. Because I, I have an idea of where I want to live and I don't want to fall. I don't want to think of, you know, you know, I've reached my cap and I can't make any more money. And the only way for me to live or, or get there would be to have something like winning the lotto, right? Like I, I definitely don't want to, to make that a thing. So yeah, I think just being able to like save money, invest it properly will get me to that next level where I can actually put a down payment on another house, live the life that I want, and maybe even continue doing that in the future to build out more, more wealth over time. And that's where, I mean, I could, I can go into a rabbit hole of all these different types of investments and things that I'm doing financial wise, but I think, I think saving money and making smart investments and figuring out other ways of 
continually making more money, whether it be through career progression or side hustles, that sort of falls into this financial category. Maybe I'll make another video on investing and I'm not even, I'm not, I wouldn't even call myself an investor. I'm a very basic, just like I let my company handle a lot of stuff and I'll look at Wall Street bets on Reddit from time to time. And, you know, I'll make small investments here and there, but it's definitely helped me out. And I've seen that the quality of my life has increased because of that. So perhaps that could be a, a good thing that I can make a video about. So I think that about covers everything in the financial side of things. Let me just check my notes real quick. So we have think before making a purchase, which I already talked about. Use apps that help save money. Things like OfferUp or Hopper, or even another one like Gas Buddy. Gas Buddy has been pretty amazing for me. Just being able to find cheap gas and even getting their cashback card so that you get points depending on where you shop to get to get gas very cheaply at a very cheap price is awesome too because people use gas all the time and I'm not trying to spend so much money on gas even though I don't drive too much these days because my office is very close to where I live. Look for cheaper alternatives and then I had the example about getting a cheaper car in Wisconsin that helped a lot. So that'll wrap up the financial section and now we can go right into the career section. Had to take the sweater off, it was getting too hot, that North Face in Florida doesn't work too well. Okay, let's get to the next one, which is going to be career. What are some notes I took on career? So, you know, millennials and Gen Z, we're all very much into this side hustle culture and trying to excel at our careers, as I'm sure that most previous generations and newer generations are also going to be. But I think especially with us, we're very career oriented, wanting the best for our careers and also the best for, you know, our, our loved ones, which depend on us and also depend on like our progress in our careers. So some things that I took note of for career is think before speaking and take more time. So I think in general, something that my girlfriend has taught me how to do very well is really learn to disconnect from work. And what that means is I have my time to work and I also have my time to be at home and do whatever it is that I wanna do. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, when I'm at work, I can do whatever I want. The reason I'm able to do that is because while at work, I put all of my attention to my work and I do the best I can during the time that I'm at work. And when I'm not working, I can also relax and do whatever it is I want to do after my day is complete. So in general, and actually thinking about it now, it doesn't really have to do anything with thinking before you speak, but I've realized that you don't have to be available all the time you know if people are asking you questions or if there's something that's expected of you well if there's something that that's expected for you and, you and you gave your word on something yes you should make sure it's done and on time and if that means working harder or longer then by all means do it but for most things throughout the day you can probably take your time with it think before responding to someone let people know that you need more time with something tell people no every once in a while, there's a, a power in that. Not only will it stress you out less, right? Because now you're not at the, I guess at the whim of everyone, if that's even the right way of saying it. You're not allowing for other people to control how you go about your day. You can control your own day and you decide when and how you wanna to respond to people. You don't have to be on all the time. You don't always have to be available. I think people will generally even respect you more if you take longer. Now, if you take an obnoxiously long amount of time, like two days with no word, then at that point, you're just ignoring someone. But if you let people know, hey, I need more time, I'll get back to you later, or there's other things that are taking more priority, then they will probably respect that and you'll probably be seen by your peers as being sort of more stable, sort of someone that they can look more to. It's weird how that works. If you're always available and always answering questions, then people might take advantage of that. They might see that you don't really respect your time as much because you'll do whatever they want instead of doing whatever you want. So I think that's very important. That's something that I've been learning as you know, the older I've gotten. And something else I have here is daily learning goals. So on my notes, and the reason I keep looking down is because I'm looking at my notes right now. I have a note on my iPhone called daily learning. And what I'm going to start to do is during the day, any small question or any small thing or even large thing that I'm not sure of, I'm going to take a note of it. So I'll give an example of some of the notes I took today. Now, mind you, I'm a software engineer, so a lot of these are related to that. So some notes are learn more about sticky sessions, learn more about Azure front door, 
you know, do a deep dive on checksums, read the computer science distilled book, read the book on Git just to dive deeper into it and actually make this video. That's another sort of topic I had here to cover today. So a lot of computer science related ones, but I think keeping a daily list of things to learn that I can do now at this time after work will keep my mind stimulated and will allow me to stay a little bit on top of the game, a little bit on top of the industry. You know, actually there, there's plenty of tools that you can use to use that or to do that, to stay on top of the industry and to stay ahead. Some other things that I wanna do as far as career progression, especially being in software engineering is studying interview questions. Now, it's always good to study interview questions because again, you always wanna be ahead of the game. Not only will a lot of the skills you learn in interview questions transfer over to your job, they'll generally help you analyze algorithms more efficiently and analyze other problems that may arise during your work. You might learn about new data structures you can implement at work that can drastically improve performance with your backend services or even front-end applications. So a lot of good things that you can learn from doing all these technical interview style questions. So that's one thing I wanna integrate more into my life. But if you've been watching me at all, or if this is even your first time on my channel, you'll notice that I have playlists all about lead code. Lead code is something I used to do daily. You can, you can go back and watch every single one of my daily streams. It's something that I miss in some way, but also something that I'm happy I stopped doing because it was fun in the beginning, but then it became a thing where after work I was just dreading having to go home and make a video about lead code. So the, the way I'm doing it now is if I feel like doing lead code, I'm gonna do lead code. If I don't feel like doing it, I'm not gonna do it and I'm not gonna beat myself up over it. As long as I'm doing something within the three pillars, if I have a day where I just wanna focus on finances, I can do that. If I have a day where I just wanna focus on physical training, I can do that. If I have a day where I just wanna focus on coding, I can do that. And of course, you're gonna have really good days where you wanna do a little bit of all three. You're gonna have some days that you don't wanna do any of them and that's totally fine. So that's the new approach I'm trying to take. There's many ways to be consistent and it, you know it doesn't have to be the same formula every day. So I think by doing all these things, doing some questions every day, keeping on top of my daily learning goals for my career. This will help me progress in my career, making sure that I'm networking with the right people, picking the right projects at work. I might make more videos about this later on, but these are just very high level ideas I have for this year and how I plan on setting goals. I know this section was a little bit shorter than the finance section, I think, but I think the main thing is as you go about your job, here's a good example. When I first started in my current role, I was afraid to ask questions because I thought it would sound stupid. And I know this is advice that is given by so many people that are more senior, but ask questions. And if you don't understand it, figure it out. If you don't understand something, ask a question or take a note like I did to research it later. I mean, taking five to 10 minutes to research something can clarify so much, so many assumptions that you have or just misunderstandings and make your life so much easier just in anything. So, I think if you're new in software engineering and you don't understand something that work, take a note, do some research, go back the next day or the next two days and try to apply what you just learned to the problem that you're looking into. And I promise you'll be a lot more effective in your work and that'll probably lead to other good things happening in your career track so that you can finally get promoted or get to that next level that you want to get to. All right, let me see the timestamp real quick. Okay, 7.24. I just cleared my GoPro so that I can record because before this I was having to record like 10 minute chunks, but I just like erased all that so we can do it a little better here. Okay, the last one here is physical. So physical is fun. I enjoy working out. I would say that, I wouldn't say that working out is my life, right? Definitely that's not my life, but I do enjoy doing something physical each and every day, whether it be walking, whether it be doing mobility training, whether it be strength training, I do like doing something every day. I just finished you know, with a two week sort of winter PTO and frankly, I just went off the deep end. I, I wasn't doing anything. I just played a lot of PlayStation. I played this game called Horizon Zero Dawn, which is awesome. I'm about to finish it. And I just had a, a lot of fun. I, I had ice cream and you know, a lot of other good food that my family was making and it was a lot of fun. But now that I'm back in the office and I have a gym that I can go to that's not packed, I can really get back into working out. And I do have some goals about that that I'm very excited to share with you all. And hopefully if you're interested in doing physical, you know, physical work, you can also do the same. So one thing is to go slower in the gym and understand that it's not a marathon. 
similar to what I was talking about in career, working out like anything else in life that is worthwhile. And I've said this exact line before, anything worthwhile takes patience and takes dedication. It's the same with the gym. So if I go to the gym one day and do 20 minutes of a workout, I'm going to be very happy that I did 20 minutes. If I go to the gym and do an hour of a workout, I'm going to be very happy that I did an hour. The most important thing is that you show up and just get started and do something. Even if you just start walking five to 10 minutes a day, it's way better than doing zero minutes of walking every single day. And especially with a lot of us working remotely nowadays, sometimes it's hard to actually get to that, right? Because maybe you're just at home on your desk all day, you're not making time to walk, maybe you're too comfortable or, you know, you know it's just a matter of like getting out there and doing something. So that's the first thing. The second thing, and actually the last thing here for me, is research different parts of muscle groups and train those. So I tend to follow like a bro split, which is just a single muscle group every single day of the week. Today I did arms, so I did biceps and triceps. Usually I would just do like bicep curls, dumbbell curls, I'll do some rope push downs, you know, some close grip bench press, and that's about it. And I, I pretty much did those things today, but I was watching some videos from Jeff Nippard, who if you don't watch, he's I think he's a great fitness influencer. He makes some really solid science-based fitness videos. And for example, today with arms, I just watched his videos on biceps and triceps, like bicep science explained, tricep science explained, just to learn more about the different pieces of each muscle and then train for those muscles specifically. That's something I'm gonna to try to incorporate into all my future workouts. So let's say when I do chest, Normally I would just sit down and do like a very standard flat bench press, but I, I feel like I should incorporate decline, incline, cable flies, you know, more of these things. So I'm taking a different approach this year. I'm working out more of the different pieces of each muscle group and just having more fun with it. I, I, I like today I worked probably for worked out for maybe half an hour, but it was a phenomenal workout. Like I was really happy to be in there. I did everything I wanted to do. I did some grip training, some ab training, and I'm excited to go back again tomorrow and just continue doing that. So I do want to continue building muscle and losing a little bit of the weight that I gained over the winter break, but overall throughout the year, I do want to get, frankly, the strongest I've ever been. Before winter break, I went for like a solid month and a half and I, I felt like I made some great strength gains. So I'm looking to get back to that section again, to that area and just see where we go from there. So with all that being said, I'm probably gonna wrap it up here. With everything I said, I think the most important thing with anything is just start. Again, and I've already said this so many times, just start. I know people have said that so many times, but if you just forget about any assumptions you have or worries that you have, and just do the thing you wanna do, whether it's like, I wanna go to the gym, but I don't know where to start, just go to a gym, go to a local gym. It doesn't have to be like an LA Fitness or a Shaq's 24 Hour Fitness. You can go to like a local, small town gym and just do something. Do it smart, research some videos, learn how to do basic lifts and start with that. Or if you're doing something in finance, you know, maybe the extra money that you have, you know, start being a little more aware of where you're spending your money. Maybe cut back on going out so often or maybe start cooking at home, you know, things like this. Start using apps like I did, like offer up to find random use things that you might need around the house or apps like Hopper or apps like gas, but you to save on gas, you know, be more aware of the spending and either put it in a savings account or invest it. And then finally, as far as career goes, just take calculated risks. Ask your peers, ask the people that you respect what's expected of you and try to get there day by day. And I, I think when you realize that it's a marathon and not a sprint, you're going to be way more fulfilled and much less stressed just by thinking that, okay, Every single day I get 1% better. It's not about getting from zero to a thousand in one day. It's every day 1%, 1%, 1%. And hopefully by the end of this year, we would have gotten 365% better. So with that being said, I'm happy that you all watched this video. I'm probably gonna keep making videos like this. Again, probably gonna be like a lifestyle channel or maybe it'll be a channel about the three things I talked about today, like some career videos, some fitness videos, some finance videos. But either way, if this video helped you out, if you feel good after watching this video, make sure to like this video, leave a comment. I'm glad to like help everyone out and hopefully impart some wisdom on you all. And I'm very excited to also hear what everyone has to say. I would love to start a discussion with you all. So with that being said, hope you guys have a great start to 2023 and I'll be sure to see you all very soon. Peace.